Easy Explain, The Stoicism of Epictetus, Part 1 of 5, An Introduction. So this series is going to be focusing on the philosopher Epictetus, who is largely known for his philosophy of Stoicism. He's not necessarily the creator of Stoicism, and there were other Stoics, uh, but he had a particularly concise and well put, very memorable, very popular, very famous uh, variety of Stoicism. So we're going to start by looking at him and his take on this philosophy. So first, who was Epictetus? Well, he lived a very long time ago, right? This is still generally considered to be under the umbrella of what we refer to as ancient Greek philosophy. But we think he was born in about the year 50 AD, and he died in approximately 135 AD. And that's a pretty long life for back then, honestly, right? He was about 85 years old. That's a pretty solid lifespan. Considering... He was also a slave for most of his life. Uh, he was eventually freed, and that's really when he became a teacher, a philosopher of Stoicism. But during his years as a slave in the Roman Empire, um, he was horribly mistreated and abused. Uh, so he was actually left with you know, lasting you know, deformities and scars. Um, it was very hard for him to get around in his later years. Uh, and, you know, that being said, he was teaching. Uh, and he had a very devoted student named Arian, who really did most of the writing and transporting around of his teachings. Uh, Arian took these things down in works that he later called the Discourses of Epictetus and the Handbook. You may have heard of the Handbook in the original Greek term, which is the Enchiridion. Uh, but essentially that Handbook is pretty much just a summary of the Discourses. The Discourses were the main work. They span over four books. It's much bigger than the handbook. The handbook is actually a pretty small document. Again, it's kind of just a summary of the discourses. So what was going on in these works? What was Arian taking down on behalf of Epictetus as he was teaching? Uh, it, was, it was his stoicism. And to you know, really break this down as simply as possible, what is stoicism? It's the philosophy of being stoic or living the Stoic life. Hopefully you've heard that adjective before, right? If you're a Stoic person, or be Stoic. Uh, but that kind of doesn't help us, right? That's a little circular. Uh, so what does it mean to be Stoic? What does it mean to live the Stoic life? This boils down to two main principles. So if you're going to be Stoic and live a Stoic life, you're going to change the things that are in your power to change. And ideally, you're changing them if they're going to make you and others happy. Those are the things you want to change. You're striving for that happiness, that best possible life of happiness, right? Your eudaimonia, as they used to call it in the Greek. But you also need to accept the things that are not in your power to change and to be okay with that. You need to find peace with the things that you can't change. That's usually what people associate with being stoic, uh, at least in this day and age. So that's what we're working with when we talk about Stoicism, especially with Epictetus. Change the things you can to make you and others happy. Accept the things you can't. Find peace with them. So Epictetus was pretty well known. Uh, he really had a lot of influence, especially thanks to Arian and writing these things down, allowing them to really you know, cover quite the distance back in the day. Uh, so through those methods, Epictetus ended up influencing even emperors. Uh, Hadrian became a disciple, for lack of a better word, and so did Marcus Aurelius. Marcus Aurelius was a very well-known Stoic emperor, and he was directly influenced by Epictetus. So maybe at this point you're asking yourself why you should study the Stoicism of Epictetus. Stoicism in general, why do we care about Epictetus? The big takeaway here, it's very helpful for a lot of people. Epictetus taught that happiness is really all up to you, that you are in the power and control of, of your happiness and your life, and it's achievable through Stoic reflection. Right? Follow this philosophy of Stoicism, reflect on it. Right? There's a bit of a practice here, definitely a mentality to adopt and incorporate, but it will make you happier. It will help you live a happier life. But how do you do this? Right? Okay. This sounds good, I'll sign on to that, but how do I practice Stoic reflection? Well, that's where the discourses come in. So there's going to be four more parts to this series, and in each of the parts we'll look at each of the books of the discourses. There are four books to the discourses, so we'll meet back here next time with book one. I hope this helps.